friends, it is, it's here. It's Friday. And if you are as burnt the fuck out as I am, I, this, you know, this life just in general is hard. It is hard being a bad bitch who's on her shit. Right? Am I right? Right. Exactly. If you're in your car, like look in the rear of your mirror and be like, right, exactly. Like where we see each other. It is hard just everything that we have to do, everything that we have to balance, everything that we have on our plates for like the parents out there. I don't know how you guys do what you do, but coup fucking does because on I can't imagine having to take care of myself and another person. Like the dog is enough, but another living being that is re- I'm responsible for you, like everything that you have to do with your life. Like I just, I feel like I need a nanny. So I can't imagine being a parent and feeling the exhaustion that you feel every single day just in your own life and then on top of taking care of something else anyways that's not what this podcast is about obviously um (laughs) I just kind of am so exhausted so I went to Coachella and let me tell y'all something okay I'm gonna give you the real tea about Coachella I don't know who created this farce that Coachella is like the best place on earth next to Disneyland, but it could not be further from the truth, okay? It really, this is my first time, so I didn't have any expectations except for, you know, I had amazing, amazing tickets or wristbands. Um, Shout out to Rima, my sister, for hooking it up. I had artist passes. So I got to move a little bit differently around Coachella than I guess the average person who was moving around Coachella could have moved. And I'm very, very thankful and very grateful. And I know myself because I'm bougie as fuck. So I need all the access. All right. I need all, everything, everything. Let me tell you something about having access at a place like Coachella that, you know, I I also want to give them some grace because they haven't had the festival in two years so maybe things have you know just like it's just a little complicated but even with having access it's so crowded it's so chaotic it's hot it's dirty it's dusty it is it is not my vibe and there are a lot of people who go and love it but like I went with work obligations which by the way was incredible I went with Kim Crawford wine shout out to them my cousins they were amazing they were incredible the wine is fantastic if you haven't tried it already um I was drinking them before this so don't even try to play me like this is some kind of plug because they don't they're not sponsoring the podcast yet but they are amazing and awesome and like they made the experience better and obviously having the access that I had made the experience better but still everyone was like what the fuck like this is crazy it was crazy it was chaos and it was hot and that is not the virgo in me was like having a real difficult time adjusting (laughs) it's just not it's just not i have realized that coachella is not for me it's just not for me it's just not for me and you know what i know that about myself and that is what is important um but just like the getting ready every day, you know, everything is like a to do there. Like you have to keep up. Like you got to get all new looks. Poor Danny was running to my mailbox every five seconds for all the things that I was coming up with. Like, oh my God, I don't have cowboy boots. I need you to go to Nordstrom and pick me up some cowboy boots or I'm not going to make it at Coachella. The girls are going to boo me out of the room. They're going to throw tomatoes at me if I don't have cowboy boots. Like it's just like a lot of pressure for what? Like for what? I It was just, you know. It's just one of those things. I, but I feel like there are so many things like that. So I don't even want to like shit on Coachella. It's just I feel like it's overhyped, if I'm being honest. Like regardless of what kind of access you have, I feel like it is very much overhyped. And maybe it was different before the pandemic. But I'm just going to let you know now that I circled the festival for three hours and asked multiple different people where the parking area was that I was supposed to be pulling my fucking car into and nobody had the answer for three hours. It was very discombobulated. Nobody had their shit together. I even asked one girl, I was like, where is the parking lot for 2C? She said, I don't know. I'm just security. Well, 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 I don't feel very secure if you don't know where the parking lot is for 2C. Like, what do you mean you're just security? That's a very important job, ma'am. That's a very important job. It just was very, it was, that's like a small example of how chaotic it was, but people were like trampling over each other and it was just very, I felt unsafe. Like, it's just not, it's just not, 
festivals in general let me i should have prefaced this whole thing festivals in general are just not my vibe like unless you're going to helicopter charter me from the parking area onto the stage unless i can be on harry styles's back riding him like a fucking pony which who wouldn't want to do that like unless i could be attached to the artist performing i don't want to go because like the 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 fields the dirt the grime the sweaty drunk high ass people bumping into you stepping on you doing all the things it's just not for me it's just not for me and also like pandemic like i i know we lifted the mask mandate and all that shit but like she's still running rampant in these streets so it was just like i think just overwhelming anxiety of just like two years of isolation and not being in a festival environment and then all of a sudden boom everybody in the same area and like whatever but it was really pretty um, you know like they the, the things it, the visuals were visualing it was very visualizing whatever it was very it was pretty but even like the parties and stuff, it just wasn't it just wasn't giving what it was supposed to have me gave and i just was like mm. Eh. also palm springs is huge massive so like from where we were staying to which is where a lot of people were staying to where you had to like drive to to get to the parties and the coachella itself and all the things it was like at least 35 minutes to 45 minutes to an hour just to even get from point a to point b and that's just one way so you got to go back it's just a ew. no also i had the driver from hell that's a whole nother story Fred, I never want to see you again. Um, <laughs> what's his, I hope he doesn't listen to this podcast or any of his uh, children or generations, whatever. He was horrible. It was horrible. 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 But also great because I got to work with a really great brand. So, like, you know, there's, like, pros and cons. There's ups and downs. And I'm sure everyone has seen on TikTok and, like, everything about Coachella and, like, everything surrounding the parties and everything that goes on, like, everyone is talking about it right now and what i also realize is this is the first coachella where tiktok has been in existence so it's like everyone is getting a first hand account of what's really going on with video which is like crazy because before it was like twitter and like you could write you know threads of shit that went down but like with tiktok and you know how the girls are on there they love to tussle so like they have all the tea all the information happy to spill it and happy to like drag everybody through the mud which like it's kind of like a love hate thing because like of course we love getting the information but then it affects people negatively sometimes depending whatever but it was just very interesting to see how everyone kind of collectively had a similar experience so this may sound like i'm just having a complaining session and there are plenty of people out there who are like fuck you bitch i wish i could go to coachella all right i want you to go and i want you to report back (laughs) afterwards and you let me know how it all went down all i'm going to tell you is wear the comfiest shoes that you have don't be trying to be cute you need to wear something with soles and padding and comfort because I wore Converse's and literally had blisters before I even got to where I was supposed to be at for the festival. It was fucking hot as hell and then it got cold. So like, it's just very, you know, you have to work with the elements. I'm not an elements girl. I don't go camping. I don't do any kind of outdoor activities except for tan. So, you know, that's just, that's just me. So if you are like me, probably not for you but if you can like get down with with the things have at it not for me moving on that was Coachella I'm fucking wiped exhausted dead it's it's shocking that I'm even here right now but there were there were good times there were good times (laughs) look the Libra and me kicking in but there were some fun times there were but there were also some times I, I I had to piss in a bush like that's not me you know, like, that's just not my lifestyle. And like, you know, I haven't had to pee in a bush since I was like 16 going to another festival. I'm not a festival girl. Festivals are not for me. I'm not supposed to be at festivals. That's the end of the story. Okay, moving on. Now that I've got that rant out, ooh, Lord, you see that was, that was festering in me for, for a little while. So I'm glad that we were able to unpack that. And I have a therapy session with Kelly this afternoon. So I'm glad that I got that out here versus there. Cause that would have been like the first 20 minutes of my session. And then I would have had no time for my real drama. All right. Wow. Collective Wusa, deep breaths. <laughs> so obviously now that we have unpacked all my shit, you guys have written in 
as you do. And let me tell you something. You guys have the most amazing stories. And when I run into you guys out, because people have people have really been listening to the podcast, y'all. Like, it really is crazy. Like, my sisters were saying, like, it is so weird to them that they're not the only people who listen to it. Because it sounds like it's just me talking to them. But, like... I was out and like every time I go out now, people are like, oh, my God, I love relationship. I listen to it every Friday, blah, blah, blah. And it just warms my heart. So thank you so much. Uh, I know I say thank you probably every single time I do a solo episode, but I just feel the need to remind you that I fuck with y'all because you fuck with me. So thank you. Okay, here we go. The first one. Okay, this one's an anonymous. I am a gay man living in L.A. When I came out to my mother a few years ago, the first piece of advice she gave me about dating men was trust what they do, not what they say. Mic drop. That's some real ass shit. Your mom is your mom is a real one. I've always tried to abide by that, but recently I got dumped pretty hard by a guy who was both saying and doing all the right things. He showed up, he made an effort, he was consistent until he wasn't. Then he went borderline MIA for weeks, barely responding to my texts until I had to basically drive to his house and break up with him on his behalf. Oh, break up with myself on his behalf. Oh God, I hate it when that happens. In two words, it sucked. It still sucks. My question is, if actions speak louder than words, but actions still can't be trusted, what the heck are we supposed to look for when deciding whether or not a man is worth our feelings? I have no idea, but when you find out, please call and let me know. (laughs) That is a great question. That is a great question because you have people who will say all the right things and seemingly do all the right things. And then when it really comes down to it, they can't actually show up for you in the way that you need them to, or they can't actually commit to a relationship in the way that they claim that they want to. And it's very confusing. And it's like the mind fuck of it all is just like, It will send you in a downward spiral. I don't know. Honestly, I think in any relationship, it's kind of like you don't know until you find out. Like you have to just keep going and and kind of trust that what people are presenting you with is what they actually have to offer. Like if they're saying the things and doing the things, you can't just move throughout every single relationship being like, I can't trust you. I can't trust you. I can't trust you. Even though like logically you should you're never gonna be able to figure out if someone is the one or not that way if you are constantly guarded constantly thinking everybody's lying to you constantly thinking that somebody's not you know telling you the truth or giving you their all so while your mother your mother's advice is right trust what they do not what they say that that really means like trust their actions and not their words and if, if they're doing the right actions and saying the right words, then you kind of have to trust it until, until. <laughs> and that's like just the way that life works. And it's unfortunate. And it's sad that like people switch up the way that they do. But like that is literally the only thing that you can do is just continue to keep loving and keep trusting and like continue to keep being yourself. You know, I've always kind of moved with the idea of like, their karma is their karma and my karma is my own and how I treat people is my karma and how people treat me is theirs so I'm going to just keep moving with love and good intentions and honesty and if somebody else can't give me that back then that's on them but like I did what I was supposed to do and I'm not going to harden myself or my heart because somebody else you know can't give me what they say that they're going to give me I'm just going to keep moving moving forward and moving with love and whatever I meant to get is going to come back tenfold in my direction I can't speak on behalf of them so that's my advice all right here goes the next one is the flag red or green my past relationships the guy would always eventually bring up the convo of no longer using condoms oh boy The new relationship six months in that I'm in now might be the most caring, sweet, etc. But we use condoms always. I didn't see a problem at first, but now thinking, what if he has an STI or is cheating? Am I just overthinking and used to red flags? Or is this something that I should bring up? And if so, how? Also new to the podcast and I love it. You're the big sister I never had. Thanks, boo. That is a very, very interesting question because it's kind of like... Yeah, you're supposed to be using condoms. Let me just be, I don't, 
who likes condoms nobody like let's just fucking get it out of the way nobody likes using condoms nobody likes using condoms they're not fun they're not exciting you know they dry you out sometimes and some people are allergic to like latex and shit like nobody will try to deal with that shit nobody likes condoms but does anybody like you know getting cooties or anything from somebody that they don't even really fucking like like no so they're a necessary evil that's how i see them and when you're in a new relationship with somebody it's a good thing that this guy wants to protect you and like maybe i mean if you guys are actually in a relationship boyfriend and girlfriend then like seemingly they're not hooking up with anybody else seemingly you guys are exclusive like that was that's what we are to assume but you know what they say assuming does makes ass out of you and me so it's okay to ask questions so i feel you know if you're if you're hooking up with people and you're hooking up with somebody consistently but they're not necessarily your partner or like your your significant other like exclusively then you could probably assume that they're also hooking up with other people so if they want to use condoms with you or if they're they're using condoms with you without you having to ask it's probably better for you like it's probably a good thing now if there's something else going on nobody should feel you know ashamed of speaking on behalf of their sexual health like people should be able to speak on that freely and openly i think we talked about that last week in the episode with shan that you guys would have already heard if you haven't heard it already we talked about how to talk to your partners about their sexual health and um you know there's a way to make it not some like doom and gloom conversation but you can easily ask you know so when was the last time that you were tested like if you're if you kind of think that you want to start exploring sex without condoms which we know what comes with that so if you were not on birth control or anything like that don't say cammy got you pregnant because i did not (laughs) that has nothing to do with me but if you know you do have a baby with this person then cameron is an amazing name very very versatile you know use it if you want to i'm giving you permission um but if you want to explore having unprotected sex with your boyfriend, which I think is normal and fine, then I think that it's okay to start asking some questions. So listen back to that episode with Shan and what she was saying about, um, you know, bringing up sexual health and sexual history, because I think that it will help you in this situation. But to assume that he's cheating or has an STI because he wants to use condoms and protect you and himself from, you know presumably an unwanted pregnancy it's a kind of a reach it's a reach you're not really touching anything right now you're kind of just spraining your arm because you're really you're really going for it and i get it because i love to jump to conclusions i will jump off a fucking tap and see bridge with my conclusions i will jump off of the eiffel tower with the conclusions that i come up with i love to jump i will jump there's a plane flying by right now and i will jump and touch the plane by jumping to the conclusions that i jump with all the time but this is kind of like a big leap so i think it's just worth a conversation if you really really like this person you guys have been together for six months have a conversation like ask him if you know he's open to exploring sex without condoms and what his sexual health is looking like and and also be prepared to share yours because i'm sure he's going to want to know the same exact thing so that it's like an open and honest thing and conversation and not like some it's very dramatic, scary thing. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Hi, Cammy. First off, I hope you see this and can give me some advice. Also, I would like to remain anonymous. I'm in a tough situation right now. I met this guy back when I was 19. He was 30. I'm 25 now. We started out as friends and later started to get more closer and intimate. I never pushed a relationship until I felt that he was also feeling some type of way. He would always tell me that he did love me, but that he was too damaged and that I was young and I deserved better. Eventually, I believed that it was better to have him as a friend and around than not. And well, this confusing relationship kept going. Throughout the relationship, he would lie, treat me like shit, disrespect me, and even hooked up with my friend twice. I don't know about the use of friend in this scenario, but okay. This was all very traumatic for me, and even when I would cut him off, he would still beg to see me, and he would be right back. Fast forward to 2018, he was going through ACL surgery recovery, and you guessed it, I was doing the most to show him that I was there to support him. He still continued treating me like shit and would stop talking to me if I didn't order him things online. Keeping in mind, he had a high-paying job, and I was barely making ends meet. 
At the end of 2018, I made the decision to cut him off completely and tell him to fuck off. Praise. <laughs> Sorry, that's not, that's not, that wasn't in the story. That's my, that's my narration. He didn't even care, nor did he try to reach out after that, but he would often stalk my Instagram and react to my posts. Sometimes when I would post that I was out on dates, he would ask right away if I had a boyfriend and all of that. Fast forward to the present, he messaged me around June 2021, asking me how I was and seemed to care about what I've been up to. I told myself that there wasn't any harm with me replying since I was so over him. Three weeks after responding, we met and hooked up. After that, he would only message me when he wanted to, quote unquote, hang out. And I told him that I was not interested in pursuing a relationship that wouldn't go anywhere, kind of hoping he would get the hint. He stopped messaging me, and later it all started again with him DMing me and sexting me and me ignoring. I haven't seen him since, but he still stalks my Instagram, but he doesn't follow me, and DMs me when he can. I don't know how I feel or what I should do. Please help. He doesn't want me, but doesn't want to leave me alone either. Here's what you need to do. Miss Mamas, you need to fucking block him. You need to block him. You need to block him from your phone. You need to block him on the in Instagram. You need to block him on MySpace. You need to block him on Zanga. You need to block him on Twitter. You need to block him on fucking Snapchat. You need to block him on all fucking platforms. Spotify, Apple, Pandora. Drop another one. You know what I'm talking about. You need to block him because he's toxic and fucking up your life like he needs to go he needs to go he needs to go and he told you here's one thing when people show you or tell you who they are you have to believe them we have to start believing people when they tell us exactly what their intentions are exactly what they're capable of exactly what they're not from the beginning if he said in the beginning that he was too damaged and that you were too young and that you deserved better than him the issue that we have is that oftentimes we in our minds are like, oh, no, 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 but I can change that. I, with all of my fucking greatness, you know, good pussy, all these things, I can change this person because I am that powerful. And yes, you are on your own, but you are not powerful enough to change a person who clearly needs therapy and who knows what else. Like you cannot, you cannot change people. You cannot change people into who you want to be and you shouldn't you shouldn't you shouldn't have to and and they also don't deserve that they need to take their own journey and make the changes that they need for themselves yes there are some men who will meet a woman and be like i want to change for her but if he hasn't already done that and this was back from uh when you were 19 years old and now you're 25 my best bet is that it's not going to happen it's not going to happen with you or who knows who else and it's not anything against you it really is him and his shit but he told you from the beginning that he was not ready and that he that he is damaged and does not you don't deserve to have to deal with him you got to pick up that's a that's a clear message and we ignore them all the time myself included like no one is fucking exempt we all think that we can change people and make people see the light and make people have this like aha moment where they're like this is the person for me i'm going to do everything that i have to do to make this person feel my love and and be everything that they need doesn't always happen like that and then you end up being disappointed and all you're doing is is looking out for potential but now you're over him you're done with him but it still seems like you may like his attention sometimes and there's also nothing wrong with admitting that either because everybody fucking likes attention so if you still kind of like the fact that you know every time you swipe up on your stories you see his little bubble right there in the first three like we've all been there so if you're still feeling like that chances are you're you are getting something out of it even though you don't want him like you are getting the satisfaction of knowing that he's still thinking about you you have to be okay with no longer having that and blocking him on everything so that you don't even have to fucking see it and you can just move forward and move on with your life because he's clearly not going to be in it you don't want him in it so eliminate him from it like at this point it doesn't even sound like you guys are friends it sounds like he's just like a bugaboo and he just shows up and pops up whenever he wants to like I'm all for, you know, keeping them around if you, if you want to have sex, but like, it doesn't sound like it's worth it. I don't know. I don't know, but that's just my advice. I think you need to block him and move on with your life completely because he is doing the most and also nothing at all. So time to go.
Block him. Block him. Okay, here we go. Hey, Gammy, I would like to stay anonymous, please. So I have a crush on my doctor I've been seeing. What? Ooh, this sounds lovely. Okay, I have a crush on my doctor, and I've been seeing him for about a year. And I definitely know there is a vibe, but he hasn't asked me out or anything. So my question to you is, should I ask him out? I've never asked a guy out, and I've always waited for them to do it first. So that's why I'm a little bit hesitant to do it. Help. Thank you. You know, I'm all for shooting your shot. I really, really am. I think that there is something to women especially like taking control and just like shooting your shot like why not like you why should we have to wait and i also like to give some credit to guys like it must be fucking daunting to be like at a bar and you see a cute girl that you want to talk to but she's with a group of like five of her friends and one of them you can tell got a bad attitude and is going to shoo you away if you even come over and like you want to come and like ask her to you know dance or like have a drink but then you got to buy all them hoes drinks and it's like oh my god you know what are they going to order <laughs> they're definitely going to get top shelf and it's like there's just so many things in mind and it's like okay what do i say to her how should I approach her? Does she have a ring? Does she have a boyfriend? Is she going to be like, ugh, no, bye? Or is she going to, you know, maybe give me her number? Is she going to give me a fake number? Like, we have to also acknowledge that, like, as women, this is obviously in the very binary sense and heteronormative sense as well, we have a tendency to shoo things away even when we want them. Like, even when we want them, we'll be like, ugh. Now, like we like to play hard to get sometimes and like sometimes it's cute, but then I think that we also need to do a little bit better at like letting guys down gently sometimes, like not the creeps, like fuck them, but like, you know, the guy who wants to like kindly come and approach you and like give you a compliment or like ask you if you want to drink, like even if you're in a relationship, there's a nice way of like telling somebody no than like dismissing them and like embarrassing them because just think about how many times they have to go through that in one night just to come up to you like the the nerve that you have to build up to go up to someone in general and like talk to them like think about like I talk about networking anxiety all the time like I had the worst networking anxiety but imagine networking anxiety on top of the fact that you want to have sex with this person potentially that sounds like shit (laughs) that sounds horrible and a lot of the pressure and like you know the hetero world is on the men to approach the women so I say sometimes we can alleviate that pressure and sometimes we can approach and in your situation with this doctor he may be concerned that like he doesn't want to cross a line because he's your doctor and like I'm pretty sure there's probably some rule about that I don't know not sure not even sure what kind of doctor it is but like say he's your gyno like Does anybody really want to be asked on a date by their gynecologist? I don't know. (laughs) Unless you have like a really sexy gynecologist. I don't want you like putting the little, what's it called? Speculum, spatula, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. That thing, that that big ass silver dinosaur beak in my coochie, ripping me open and taking swabs, being like, hey, so what do you think about drinks Friday night? Like, what? Get the fuck out of here. Take that thing out (laughs) and get out get out of the room nobody wants that so like or maybe he's like your dentist or like your cardiologist I don't know but like it's probably not in his best interest to ask you on a date if he's not 100% positive that you're going to say yes and that you're single and everything else so I think that it's absolutely okay for you to say something to him and be like you know like I don't know I also don't know how many doctor's appointments you're making uh, depending on what he, <laughs> what kind of doctor he is, if he's like your uh, primary care physician, how often are you going to the doctor to go see him? Be honest. I think it's perfectly okay for, you know, in conversation or something to be like, hey, like, so I, I really think that we have a vibe and I would love to see you like outside of this office. Like, what do you think? And see what he says. But then if he is like, oh, I'm married or like I have, I'm dating somebody or something, then you can't go back to the doctor. So you got to think about that. (laughs) That's also a part of it I just thought about, but I think that it's okay to be like, you know, I look a little bit different outside of the doctor's office. If you ever want to go get a drink, like something cute and like quick, um, it doesn't have to be, you know, some really crazy elaborate scheme. But like, I think that 
it's perfectly okay to ask him on a date perfectly okay now the other way around I don't I can't say that that's the case I can't say that that's the case it would be different like say I don't know if you have kids but like say it's like your kid's pediatrician that asks you on a date cool that's a very cute sexy thing but like I don't think that I want my orthopedic doctor asking me on a date after he's looked at my toes that's what they do right toes feet I don't want that so <laughs> that's not that's not it or my guy the gyno one is like really out of pocket that's gonna be a no so ask him on a date and let me know how it goes all right here goes the next one hi cammy i don't know how advice typically gets in but i thought i would try it through dm that's a perfect way by the way the dms we love there's also voicemails but the dms are always great on the relationship account okay I'm a young black bisexual woman who's just really starting to date. However, I keep running into this issue with males and females where they will flirt with me in private settings and we will really vibe, but it never goes anywhere. It's been like flirting through DMs and then unsending messages or flirting with someone else in front of my face after they begged me for sex. I haven't slept with anyone though, LOL. But there's been a recent instance that has really stung. I hung out with this guy and it went decently well. Later, I saw in his group chat with some friends that someone dissed me because I'm dark-skinned, and he laughed at that message. Okay, I'm going to make it through this before I cuss him out for you. All right. One of his friends was showing me some other messages at the time, and I scrolled down too far and saw that message. Now he's still flirting with me, but he's going after one of my friends. I've been told that I could be intimidating because of my accomplishments at my age, but it's beyond frustrating to see that this has happened almost 10 times since I broke up with my ex about a year and a half ago. It just seems like there's always something not making me good enough. So I guess the question I'm asking is, am I doing something wrong? to keep getting these reactions from people let me tell you something fuck all of that (laughs) i was really trying to like to to pull it together without cursing and like give some like profound message fuck all of that fuck all of that because first of all as a black woman you're already intimidating like as black women we're already intimidating and then as a beautiful darker skinned woman they want to say that you're intimidating because of your accomplishments would you be intimidating because of your accomplishments if you were a white woman like let's be fucking real like it, there's there's always there's always that thing there's always that other what like what else are you doing oh now you're doing too much you can never just be great just for being great and just for being you and whatever the fuck the group chat thing Stop flirting with him because he's a fucking clown. And anybody that can't stand up for you in those kinds of settings with their fucking friends is not worth your time. So if he didn't immediately say, like, I think she's gorgeous or I think she's beautiful, chill the fuck out. Or just, like, chill out, bro. That alone will get a bitch's panties wet. But he didn't do that. He said he hit it with a haha. What's funny? What's funny? Because it's not funny when you're flirting with me and trying to fuck. Like, is it? No, it's not. So... No, stop talking to him. He's not worth it. He's not worth it. And he can go talk to your friend. But honestly, if your friend talks to him, she's also a clown because <laughs> sorry, not to not to rag on your friend, but like I personally, as a lighter skinned woman, as a lighter skinned black woman, I'm not talking to no motherfucking colorist ass man, period. Like you're not you're not getting any of my attention. If I talk to a man specifically a black man and he starts shitting on darker skinned women you can just cut it right the fuck out right now because this is never gonna work because at the end of the day my sisters are brown skin and dark skin my friends are brown and dark skin and if you can't be around them and think that they're just as beautiful then we don't need to we don't even need to no 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 and if i'm thinking about procreating with you and i have bring daughters into this world with you and that's what you think about them especially when they're darker skinned black men i'm like y'all are really out of line that's a whole other podcast for a whole other day (laughs) but like you are really crazy if you think as a darker skinned black man you're gonna get with a lighter skinned black woman make children and they're gonna come out what what color what color because if you're shitting on brown skin and dark skin women or like what kind of children do you think i black people listen to podcasts y'all get it you understand you know what i'm talking about but like it really is a lot to unpack and there's a if there is a very layered conversation that goes along with this but like you 
most of these guys in particular, I'm assuming that you're talking about a black man, but I don't know. But most of these black men are raised by black mothers who also are their color, if not darker. So it's like, you don't fuck with your mom. Do you not fuck with your sisters? Do you not fuck with your cousins? Do you not fuck with your aunties or your grandma? Fuck you. Get the fuck out of here. So that's that for him. Bye. Bye. Next, as far as, you know, these other relationships and things that you've been in with people who say that you're intimidating, honestly, I've heard that about myself more times than not. I have heard that I am intimidating almost every single time that I go out. And even talking to some of my guy friends, they're like, if I was a guy trying to approach you, I would be intimidated because you just look like the type of woman that if if i'm gonna my guy friend literally told me this a few weeks ago he was like you look like the type of woman that if a man is gonna approach you he's gonna have to approach you with something to say well goddamn i am so sorry (laughs) i am so sorry sir that you have to come up with something to say to me if you're gonna approach me in public i am so sorry is that like too hard for your brain oh my god say nothing then give me nothing king that's what i want get the fuck out of here are you kidding like something to say yes you're gonna have to string more than two words together to get in my pants yeah that's gonna be a requirement that's gonna be a basic bare minimum requirement because what are you drinking could get me a drink but then I'm eventually gonna walk away from you so like yeah it's nice to be able to be approached by a man who strikes up an actual conversation with you what are you drinking is a great way to get me with you to the bar but like what else are you what else are you saying what else are you going to talk about so like if somebody can't do that in order to approach me is that really the type of person that I want to be with at the end of the day like am I really even attracted to that no I want somebody who is not intimidated I want somebody who's going to come up to me and be like not not these words exactly but I need you to give off the energy of like bitch you and me yes this is happening this is happening. I need somebody to be like a little bit aggressive. Like I need you to give me energy. Give me energy. I need you to literally make me feel like you want to put me on an altar and like worship me. And that's a Scorpio in me. And that's a whole other fucking thing because clearly that's crazy and like God complex. But like, that's how I, that's what I need you to come with. That's what I need you to come with. And if you can't do that, then you got to go. If you're going to be sitting in a corner like, oh, I don't know if I should come up to her. What? Like, you're not even for me. (laughs) You're not even for me. We are not compatible. So I say you just keep fucking doing you and keep being amazing and keep at it because whatever you're doing is working. And whoever's intimidated by that can kick rocks. And whoever is not, come on now. And they will. So you keep doing you. I, ooh. I wish I was there that day when you saw those messages because I would have been like, what's this? What's this? What's going on? Ugh. Ugh. Gross. But don't get discouraged and don't think that it's all you. And if there are things that you feel that maybe you could pull back on, like sometimes, you know, for myself, even I'm, I've talked about this before on the podcast. Like I am working on being so in tune with my feminine energy and you know just like really diving into that because there's something to that and when you have your shit going on and you are accomplished and you are successful like it can be very easy to kind of like get in that kind of zone where it feels like you know oh I got it I got it like I can do it myself I could and like yeah you can but it's okay to also leave room for somebody else to do things for you if they want to do things for you so I just think you know just keep that in check and you're good but other than that you're not dumbing down your light to make anybody else's shit shine fuck that they can go I just want for you to go into this weekend feeling sexy and free and absolutely fabulous and you know live in that life and if you are experiencing the same burnout that I was talking about in the beginning Hopefully we can get a nap in because holy hell is a bitch tired. I need like a four day nap. So wishing you naps and good vibes only for the weekend. And I'll see you next time. Bye, Mazzy.
I'm Cami Crawford, host of The Relationship Podcast. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and want to see more videos, click below to subscribe and like this video for more Dear Media content. So shut up and listen.